Today's class, we will dive into the exciting world of impact play. Impact play is a type of BDSM play that involves striking the body of a partner for pleasure, both, both sides of pleasure. It can be a thrilling and intimate experience for both the top and bottom. Now note, moving forward, if I say top or bottom, that could also mean dominant submissive. I know they're separate roles, but for this case, top and bottom, we're going to be used because we're not going to assume anyone's power exchange here, but it's important to approach it with care and caution. This class is a perfect, is perfect for beginners who are interested in exploring impact play, but have limit, lim little to no experience. Tops, I'm talking to you. Dominance. Pain scales. Something I like to do with a new partner is start with pain scales. I will ask for pain numbers to be given during a scene in order to learn the bottom's pain tolerances. Example, with a new partner, I may not want to go over a five. So I'll slowly build up to the five and then stay there and vary it up and down again. You don't want to stay on the same number all the time. Okay. If you're, if you're on the same number, it's just going to get irritating. So you go five. Okay. Three. Okay. I'm going to switch implements now. I'm using a cane. Again, we talked about this before with negotiation. Now I'm using a cane. Don't use the same power from a paddle to a cane. The canes are going to do a lot more damage if you link them with the same strength as you did with the cane. Start slower on that too. Work your way up, right? And again, don't use your wrist like this because again, you're not really controlling where you're going. You want to use your full body because you have more control over that. It's the same thing with disc golf. If you throw with just your wrist, you're not going to get a lot of movement on it. You throw with your entire body. Okay, let's see. Do, 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 da, da, da. Another technique I may use, and I mentioned this earlier, with someone a little bit more experienced, would be asking them to say yellow when I get to a point that they're uncomfortable. And I'll work up to that. I won't just say, okay, slap yellow. That's not how that works. You work them up and then you get to a yellow and you're like, okay, now I know where your pain tolerance is. And so then, mental note for that implement, I know that that's as far as I can go. I'll even write it down sometimes. Pain level five with this implement, I was swinging. Medium impact, okay. and then switch it up. I'm going to be using a slapper instead. I'll start low and work them up to there. And again, realize that as you're, as you're playing, the endorphins are going, the bottoms can take more punishment. Okay. And when I say punishment, I don't mean actual punishment, but they can take more stronger hits. Usually not all the time, usually. So their pain skills will change as they go. But again, always in your head, it is your responsibility as a dominant to look after their well-being so even if they're sitting there shouting that they can take more if it's something that you know they can't and afterwards they're going to be damaged from it step in mental check sanity check this is not okay this is something that i'm going to go up to a six and that's it i'm not going to go to a 10 and i and you know your pain skills are altered now so i understand that so take that into account so yeah be careful with this method and save it for when you have more experience with someone and more experience in the scene if you're new. Okay. Any questions about pain skills? Awesome. Uh, so another technique is warming up the bottom. When engaging in impact plates, important for the top to warm up the bottom's body in order to prevent injury and make the experience more pleasurable. As I said, you just don't want to go whole hog in the first, first slap. Here are a few techniques that a top can use to warm up their bottoms for impact play and BDSM. Number one, massage. As I mentioned before beginning impact play, the top can use a gentle massage to warm up the muscles and increase blood flow. Again, we're using science, physiology. Uh, you're getting more blood flow to the, to the, the bottom's body. Light spank. Starting with a light spanking can help acclimate the bottom to the sensation of impact and gradually build up their tolerance. Not everyone's going to be a freaking pro in the first time, okay? You got to build them up. Number three, sensation play. Incorporating sensation play, such as running a flogger or paddle lightly over the skin, for example. So fun. This, have you ever smelled a flogger, like a leather one? Oh, so good. You just run it, run it over someone's face lightly. Oh, on their chest. So good. You can help tease and arouse the bottom while preparing their body for more intense impact. Stroking, number four. Stroking the skin with your hand or implement, such as a crop or flogger, can help build the anticipation and prepare the body for more intense impact. Number five, warm-up implements. Using implements that are specifically designed for warming up the skin, such as a fur glove or a soft flogger, can help stimulate the nerves and increase blood flow into the skin before moving to more intense impact play, okay? There's a lot of physiology here going on, right? As I said, you can take more and more as you go. That's because of this, because of more blood flow, more endorphins more everything. So it's nice to have a little soft flogger that's used for just light, just warm up. 
you know. So I we I will have a demo bottom up here. Frost has been generous enough to volunteer in a little bit. But an example, I just want to do this real quick. An example of what like a flogger would look like. I don't have it on me, but I do have fire hand. It's like it's like a figure eight motion like this. This is called a Florentine. And uh, this, you just do it softly and you're, you're aiming for like the, the, the top of the back or the booty. And you're just going through and you're just, you know, you're just soft, soft falls, letting the falls do most of the work and you're just in the moment. Right. So I'll show you that on frost in a little bit here, but that's sort of the warm up implementation. Sorry. I wanted to show that to sort of show like what the floggers do. Cause you're not just, you know, like just, you know, it's like a massage and it's just, it's just, it's so cool to get into that headspace. I, for me, I use my own sensory play. I'll put on like perfect circle and just vibe, right? That's my impact play song, songs of choice. Okay. That's what I'll do. So also, as I mentioned earlier, gradual intensity, it's important to gradually increase the sensation and intensity, of the impact as the bottom becomes more comfortable and accustomed to it. This can help prevent injury and ensure safe and pleasurable experience for both partners. It also has a nice effect of building the anticipation and slowly giving the bottom more and more of what you want to give them. I know you're in a hurry to get them what they want and what you want, but take your time. As I mentioned in the negotiation class and the safety class last week, you're worth the time for the tops using a proper posture and technique. As I mentioned, each tool has its own technique, but it's generally you want to avoid using only your arm or wrist to deliver the impact as it can lead to injury. Instead, use your entire body to generate the power and follow through on each strike. When I say generate power, do not go like this and just go full every time. You're not freaking, you know, you have control, you're a human. Use your body to generate your desired power levels with practice. Don't just go into it and say, okay, I'm just gonna go forward. Using proper technique during impact play can is essential to ensure both a safe and enjoyable experience. Here are some tips for proper technique. As I mentioned, warm up, Targeting, aim for the body, uh, aim for the body parts with the larger muscle mass, such as the buttocks, thighs, or fleshy parts of the back. Avoid bony areas, joints, and all the other organs, as we mentioned. Using the right tool. Different tools create different sensations, as I mentioned. Experiment with different tools and find out what works best for you and your partner. Consider the weight, length, and flexibility of the tool as well. Again, practice makes perfect in this regard, but only if you start slow. Practice makes permanent if you do not, okay? You do not want for practice to be a permanent mark on someone's body. So go slow. I also recommend, and I mentioned this later, use pillows. Go after a chair. Test yourself before actually using it on someone else. Don't use it. Don't use this stuff on people unless you're ready to. VR is amazing. It allows us to experience this stuff without having a lot of repercussions in terms of physical damage. Mental damage, though, as again, some people have phantom pain. But when you're in IRL and you're using a flogger, make sure you have practice on something first. Funny story. <laughs> okay, I wasn't actually going to tell this story, but I'm actually going to keep this in. I was at an after party once and I came across someone who was just taking a flogger and just lightly with the tips of the falls hitting chair, which is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to warm up, right? You're supposed to figure out what you want to do. This person's brand new to the scene. I know that they are. I've seen them a couple times. And so I'm like, okay, look. I'm like, look, I'm going to sit in this chair and I want you to hit me, you know, just, just use the flogger on me. And he's like, but we haven't negotiated. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. Look, I am consenting for you to do this. If I having an issue, I will actively say yellow and stop you. If you're okay with it, hit me. And so they did. And I noticed they were only hitting me with the falls. So it was stingy. I said, no, 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 aim with the, not the tips, but the ends. And so he started doing it right. You know, he started doing it correctly. I'm like, okay, there you go. And after about three minutes, you know, if a proper top knows what it's going to feel like first, so don't be afraid to be like, okay, hit me, you know, like, or test stuff on yourself first. It's like the switch mentality. Two for you, one for me, you know? That's also fun. I'll, I'll you know, flogger, 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 whap, just to make sure I know what it feels like. And so afterwards, afterwards I got up, I'm like, good job. You know, I like shook his hand. I'm like, now you kind of know what you're doing. And then he's like, you were my first. He was so cute. I, I couldn't help but laugh though. I'm like, I'm glad to have been your first man. Appreciate it. And I walked away. 
literally it was a sample session. It was like a tasting booth. So aftercare wasn't necessarily needed. Later that night, he played with one of my friends and uh, he was able to do it correctly. So fun for all. While you're playing, monitor your partner, partner's condition. Check in regularly with your partner throughout the scene and be aware of signs of distress or injury. Stop immediately if your partner uses a safe word or signals that they need to pause or stop. I keep harping on this, but you know what? How, you know how many people forget that when they're in the moment? The reason I keep leading with safety and consent is one, it's hugely important, but two, drill it into people's heads because it's very important. You don't want a consent violation. That's no good. As Sonic says, I'm sure he doesn't actually go over BDSM and consent in one of his Sonic says, or that would be a fun video, wouldn't it? Okay. And follow up after the scene, engage in aftercare with your partner which can include physical comfort, emotional support, and debriefing. Review the scene to discuss what worked well and what can be improved upon in future scenes. Okay. So I'm going to demonstrate full range of motion with my demo bottom. So I will ask Frost to come up here. Okay, so basic form. So let's pretend I had floggers again, right? So this is why I asked you about the fire thing. Now, Frost does have phantom pain, so I'm going to start slow, okay? So basically, what I'm going to do is pretend I have these floggers. These, these claws are floggers instead. They're not real claws, Frost. So basically, I'm just doing this. Just light sensation on Frost's back. There's no, there's no intensity here. It's just really slow and methodical, right? So this is what a flogger would actually look like across the back. If someone was bending over, then I'd have a clearer picture at someone's booty. But, you know, this is just basically what we start with, right? And then so we gradually get more intense. And so what I'll do is I'll take both floggers and I'll, maybe I'll do a more intense sort of like, like crop like this, you know, across the back. Again, you're avoiding anything in the lower back. You're hitting the meaty parts. Again, the, the, the top of the back is an okay area. There's still some da danger there. You want to avoid the bones on the shoulders and the neck. Do not wrap that thing around and hit the neck. So you're coming across here. So squeezers, busy squeezers. Can you uh, bring me over some implements so I can show them off, please? So that would be the basic flog orientation when you're doing this, right? So these things have sound to them. I didn't actually hit you, Frost. <laughs> these things have actual sound to them. So I'm going to hit you lightly. It's going to sound like it's a lot, but it's going to be. You're going to be okay. All right. See how I'm trying to comfort them and make sure that they're okay right so i'm just going to lightly go like this like that and then they jump okay i hit the button wrong but i'm doing i'm using my whole body it's not hitting the button but you get where i'm going with this like like on the end here i'm aiming for the thigh and the buttocks area right here i'm not trying to wrap around here because that would be that would be more painful because there's sensitive skin right here i'm not touching there's sensitive skin right here you want to avoid hitting that area at, with the same pressure. You can still sort of tap that area, but don't hit someone full bore with it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. You okay, Frost? Thumbs up. And cool. Okay. Next. Either. Oh, the single tail will avoid. Again, I don't have the experience with this. So we'll put that to the side. I appreciate it. And we'll go after the crop again. Again, we're not going to do much here except for a little, okay, right here, full body, right there. You can also use it on the upper back, like right here. And again, the sensation of, I have the hands of a surgeon, by the way, of just dragging it across someone's skin. You're not actually doing any damage here. Or you can come up a little bit, like, like that. Or you can do what I like to do. And do a little bit of the fishtail right here <laughs> in the in the thighs area. So I that's I call that the fish, and it's it's more funny than anything else. But yeah, anything else over there? Not really. Okay, cool. Frost, thank you very much. Jag, can you can you give snuggles if, if Frost needs them for me? Thank you. I appreciate the assistance greatly. Thank you very much. Okay, let me get back over here. Does anyone have any questions about what just happened? Did you see, like, what I was trying to do the entire time? I was trying to make sure that they were in the moment and they were here. If someone is nonverbal, 
mutes, uh, mutes as well. You can use keys. I've mentioned this in a few classes already. Hold the keys once they drop, scene's over. So, as I mentioned, thank you, Squidge, for helping out. I greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned, this class is not just for tops, it's for bottom as well. So here's, a, here's some tips for some bottoms. Communicate. Never be afraid of using your safe word. Or giving feedback during a scene. If something is wrong, you need to make sure the top is aware so the action doesn't continue and adjustments can be made. If you have protocols around speaking during the scene, find a middle ground where you can make your issue known respectively. Respectfully, excuse me. This can be used like using safe words like yellow, nonverbal cues such as hand motions, or dropping keys, as I mentioned. And using clear and concise language to avoid misunderstandings. That hurt. Pain level five. That means pain level five is probably not a good thing. Okay? That's clear. Don't say, eh, I don't really feel it, or, oh, that, that hurts too much. Okay, I, that hurts too much is close, but was it a seven? Like, is it just this implement or is it another implement? Like, or is it just all, all, all of the above? Or are you, or have I hit you to the point where you can't, you don't really want to do this anymore? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm feeling. Okay, so red, we'll stop. Here are some techniques that bottoms can use to receive the impact as well during impact play and BDSM and stay present in the moment. Again, you don't want to go so far into subspace if you can avoid it unless you're really into somebody and that's sort of what you want to do. And you have negotiated that, that that's okay. And that person knows what to do. You don't want to go completely into subspace with someone new, in my opinion, because you don't know what they're capable of or what they'll do when you actually go into it. So get some trust with someone first before you get to that point, if at all possible. Again, some people go into subspace really easily. Just make sure that again, like last week, if you're, if you go into subspace easily and you're playing with someone brand new, do it in a public environment. Don't do it in their private house. Because if you have so much endorphins going, you're not going to really understand what's happening. And that could lead to some dangerous situation. So make sure you have someone there as a backup. Again, if you have an established relationship, that's a different story. The person who's hitting you is your backup. So here are some techniques. Relaxation. The key to being able to receive impact is relaxation. A bottom needs to learn how to breathe deeply and relax their muscles. Hensing up can increase the likelihood of injury and decreasing the pleasure of impact play. Practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness techniques can help you stay present and focused during impact play. Try focusing on the sensations in your body without judging them or getting caught up in them. Okay, I feel I, feel I am on a, on a horse, you know, like on one of those spanking benches. I feel the leather underneath my knees. I feel the leather underneath there. I'm in a place that's purple of all places and the pain that's the pain that's being hit is enjoyable and I am okay with it. I I'm in the moment with my dominant. It's all working. That's mindfulness, mindful breathing. It's like my, and being mindful is basically, okay, I know where I am. I'm grounding myself. It's oh, another word for it is mindful grounding. Excuse me, not mindful breathing. <laughs> proper posture. A bottom should maintain proper posture during impact play. This means keeping your back straight and your hips aligned. This will help distribute the impact throughout your body and minimize injury. So if you're bending over, don't just be like to one side like this, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to actually do some damage possibly. You want to make a stable target. If you're moving around like this, you might get hit in the kidneys. You know, you want to stay still and stable. Bracing. Bracing involves tensing specific muscles to help absorb the impact. Remember how I said that tensing in general is a bad thing? Well, this is, for example, when you're being spanked at the bottoms, you can tighten your glutes to help absorb the impact. Counting. Counting is a common technique used by bottoms to help manage the intensity of impact play. By counting numbers of impacts, a bottom can mentally prepare for the next one and better communicate their needs and limits to the top. If you're counting five, six, seven, eight, nine, you're gone. The top knows to stop because you're gone. You're not, you're not answering. So it's good because like, and plus, if I'm hitting someone and they're counting, I can tell how, how hard I'm hitting based on five, six, seven, eight. You know, like it's not pain scales, but I know based on what they're doing, what's happening. Breathing. Breathing deeply and regularly can help the bottom manage the intensity and the impact and stay relaxed. Movement. The bottom can also move their body in response to the impact, either absorb the impact or enhance the pleasure. For example, the bottom may arch their back during the impact 
to expose their buttocks or shift their weight. Again, staying still is one thing, but just doing a quick little arch is okay as long as it's an area that's easily hit. If you're moving around too much, just don't do that, but a quick little arch will actually help distribute. And taking breaks. It's important to take breaks during an impact scene to give yourself time to recover. Talk to your partner about setting up a system of breaks that works for both of you. Because the tops are gonna get tired. Bottoms get tired too. Water break. We're almost done. <laughs> it's funny because I'm, I'm feeling under the weather, but as I talk, I get more and more into it and I start getting the endorphins moving. So, as we mentioned in last week's class, aftercare is an essential part of any BDSM scene. Physical aftercare. A bottom may experience the physical soreness or bruises from impact play. To alle alleviate this, the use of ice packs, heating pads, or pain relief cream, uh, CBD oil, or what have you, on top of other things. It is important to note that the bottom should not take any medication that thins the blood, such as aspirin or ibuprofen, as that can increase the risk of bruising and or bleeding. Emotional aftercare. Impact play can be an emotionally intense and a bottom may be feel vulnerable or overwhelmed after the scene. It is important for the top to provide emotional support and reinsurance during aftercare. The bottom can also encourage the self-care activities such as taking a warm bath, meditating, or journaling to process their emotions. Communication. Aftercare is also the time for the bottom and top to communicate about the scene. Once they're out of that headspace, the bottom can express what they like and they didn't like, any discomfort or pain they experienced, if you're not mentioning that during the time, and any boundaries that were crossed. Again, you step over boundaries sometimes on accident. That's when yellows are used, and you can talk about them after the fact. The top can also provide feedback and check in with the bottom about their physical and emotional state. And number four, rest. Rest is important for the body to recover from physical exertion. The bottom should rest and hydrate to keep their body healed or to help their body heal after impact play. So last but not least, I wanted to go over impact play and its role in power exchange dynamics. This is a quick little, quick little step I added to the end of this thing in order to sort of understand that impact play and punishment are two different things. A lot of people are like, how do you do a physical corporal punishment with someone who is a masochist? It's all about the headspace all about the mindset so in a lot of power exchange dynamics they use impact play as a punishment tool or maybe not impact play but they use impact as a punishment tool and it can also be used as a reward if you have a masochist if a, if a partner who's a masochist i will reward them with some impact play for example it's important to remember that there is a clear distinction between punishment and punishment and it's all about the mindset and it's also a distinction between impact play as well so for impact play, it's a set scene where I'm doing something with impact toys, great. If I'm doing punishment, it's usually used in a role play way, okay? So if I'm approaching a reward or punishment, it will be more playful and role playing. It's a great way to build trust and intimacy in a relationship. And while it does involve pain, it's usually pleasurable for both parties. Punishment, on the other hand, is handled seriously and used to correct behavior and discourage future rule breaking. I will not I usually won't punish someone off the bat, but it is a buildup to that that leads us there. I have an adult conversation first with someone that there's an issue. And if it leads to further issues, I will issue a small correction verbally or use a correction ticker er, that I have if the activity, which can be counted for future spankings. Each one that I click is five spankings. If the activity continues, we can enter into punishment, which is given never in anger. Never, ever punish in anger, ever. Wait until the anger passes and then issue the punishment because you're not punishing out of malice or some sort of just being frustrated at somebody. You're punishing because it is guiding the submissive or bottom in the direction that is better for the, the relationship and the, the dynamic, okay? So handle it seriously, have your adult conversations after the punishment is given, which I will do counting specifically for punishment. I will also have an impact tool that is only used for punishment. So I will not use this tool ever during play. It's only, if I get it out, then you know it's a punishment. So that's how I switch that mindset, right? You sit someone down and you explain what's going on, that you're disappointed and that something needs to change. And this punishment is used to correct future behavior and rule breaking. If someone is just full on bratting at this point, pause the dynamic, a conversation, say, look, this is something that's not gonna work. I'm doing this out of love for you or for your well-being. And if they're still going off, then you kind of have to think 
that it might not be the right relationship for you. It, it depends because for me, browning is fine if someone's in low protocol, but if someone is in medium or high protocol, especially during punishment, if they're bratting, that's a big problem specifically for me. So da -da 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 -da. after it's over, it becomes washed away and it's not brought up in a negative way again, unless it's a continued repeated activity. So it's a good way for the submissive to have it wash away from them and feel like they've been loved and guided. Some of the best bonding in a BDSM relationship and a dynamic is issued during punishment because it shows the care of the dominant for the submissive in order to guide them in the direction that the dominant wants them to go. That's mutually negotiated, right? Does anyone have any questions about power exchange dynamics with impact? Catharsis. Yes, exactly. Sorry. I can't see that far. This is kind of dark. I mean, hopefully I didn't break the uh, camera there.